I was able to read between the lines of Cohort 3 profiles that this particular group of fellows were a very sharp, clever and clear group of individuals. The opportunity that we have here is to be a forward signal, a forward signal to the world around what is possible. As I was thinking about what's the biggest problem I can solve with just who I am, it's, well, it's all your problems. And what are the platforms I can build that helps everyone else solve the problems they're trying to solve? I've been working in development for about 10 years. I've also been a passionate student of voyaging and looking at how programs were designed really confused me because I thought, no wonder they don't work. They were sort of planned badly. We talk about Aotearoa New Zealand, this tiny little country at the bottom of the world. What could we pilot here to mobilise an entire generation to explore these big issues that affect our future? Events like this tend to bring together connections you would not otherwise normally make. You have great conversations with smart people from around the world on topics you wouldn't expect. And we're sitting in Aroha Valley and what an appropriate place to be. Because Aroha is deep rooted, it's not just a heart thing, it's actually an embodiment within your being. Does your body tell you when you're hungry? Does it tell you when you're tired? Does it tell you when you fall in love? So the real question is, do you listen? Our mission is forming better global citizens from childhood. Our framework is based in three simple concepts, but very powerful. Play, reflect, and take action. We are all one. So human beings, animals, spring, plants, Yes, Ibas. We are all one. The Earth system is accelerating. The life support system of our planet is accelerating. There is one reason for that acceleration. It is us. Some others have pointed out the spirit of Kaitia Kitanga is the key to solving the world's problems and to saving the ocean. There's 8 million metric tons of plastic going into the ocean each year. It's the same as three to five plastic bags of trash on the entire shoreline of the world. We know that technology can change our behavior drastically and get hundreds of millions of people to adopt new lifestyles and new behaviors. We help people step into the new identity of being a soil maker, where you can make soil with your neighbors. It is a decentralized approach, not because it involves a blockchain, because it involves you. Of all the things that we waste in, across a global scale, I think the one that we miss the most is not water, not food, not even fossil fuels, but rather human potential. Fortunately for us, we had internet back then, and that led me to a path of self-learning and self-education. And I ended up teaching myself computer programming, game development, game design at a very early age. I became what's called an operator and running a global business for a decade. The one that stuck was an investment firm I started in 2001. I was too foolish, crazy, and stupid to be told I couldn't. Fall in a piece so many one of the things I see in Hong Kong, and I'm sure you see it around the world as well, is this huge wealth gap. Uh, and this inequality is driven by a lack of knowledge, a lack of resources, and a lack of opportunities. And I've seen how in a very short period of time, a country that holds a sixth of the world population took more and more people out of poverty using innovation. But the cool thing is it, it turns any room into an accredited classroom. So this could be a refugee camp, a prison cell, a hospital ward, an international room. Now you kind of get the ability to put formal education, real education, out anywhere incredibly low cost. There's no opportunity for Pacific filmmakers to tell their stories, to capture what's happening right now, so that the world can be aware of it. We recently launched uh, Films for the Planet, which draws upon a network of luminary filmmakers, scholars, and movement makers. Together we created the Documentary New Zealand Trust because we are passionate about documentaries, films, and storytelling. But we believe that the story of the future needs to be told in a different way than the story of the past. To think about how our work could be used for the highest purpose and the highest good in the world today. We need to move animals over the land in planned grazing patterns that mimic the movements of these wild herds of animals. And that regenerates the soil and moves carbon from the atmosphere back down into the ground. How are we designing our lives to be sustainable? 
When do we have the most energy to actually take on a project? When is it the right time to actually be innovating? The remote sensing that we're doing, it's basically a magnifying glass. And so very detailed maps and areas for precision agriculture. If every child in New Zealand had a two or three tablespoons of hemp seeds a day, we could dramatically increase the health of this whole country. The high prevalence of antibiotic resistance caught my attention. There's going to be an increase in margins of new superbugs. We need to act now so that we can preserve modern medicine. This problem affects 70% of women across the globe who do not have any access to any form of sanitary products. I'm here to talk to you about a future of healthcare that can be made freely available to everybody that's easy to access. I went to work for the mayor of Los Angeles uh, about five years ago as the first chief sustainability officer and we set about how do we help LA to become the leader. It's the epitome of sprawl and traffic and pollution but we're making a difference, creating a truly sustainable city. I'm seeking to propel a circular and regenerative economy and this is a really unique opportunity here in New Zealand. And we want to really change that paradigm and allow people to participate in a decentralised economy in a decentralised way without having to think about it. Every single time that you pay with choice, 50% of your transaction fee that would normally go offshore goes to a charity that you get to choose. So that every single time that you pay, you now pay with purpose. Tokens and this new economy that tokens enable um, will basically be one of the building blocks that we can use to bring people together and align incentives and create these new businesses that are more connected. What it really makes me tick is that not only do I want to re-decentralize the web, I want to empower our children to become makers and not just takers of the technology that shapes their lives.